Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, Kim, I have the little spiel if you want, I can say it. <laughs> so, um, hi, so good evening. This is the Transportation Advisory Committee meeting for October 3rd. And I'm just gonna read a quick statement about uh, remote meetings. So it says pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can access the meeting in real time via technological means. So I don't know if we have anybody in our waiting room. We do not. And so, okay, we'll get started. Oh, and I just, um, we'll just do a quick roll call of everybody who's here. So Guilford is here. He started the meeting and everybody else. Kim Tremblay. The Bodge. And Tracy. Christine. And, all right. Okay, we're here. Great. So um, um, I'm going to sign off and sign on my on my computer. So I'll be right back. OK. Um, all right. So I think we'll wait for Chris for the update on the IWAC because she's been in touch with the school people the most. Um, but I'll just give you this quick update about the school zones. So um, so Chris and I had a meeting with a few counselors and um, Anna Devlin got there and Lynn Griesmer, and they're planning to bring forth a motion to the council for the council meeting later this month, like asking the DPW to create uh, school zones at the middle school and high school. So that's still to be continued. I don't know, Guilford, have you heard from them at all about it? Nothing. So, I mean, I think what they, what the proposal is, is to, um, like defer to the DPW on where the signage would go and things to set up those school zones. Um, and then there also at that discussion, there was also consideration about the timing of the school zones um, for the elementary schools, which I know is something that Jeremy Anderson has brought up at a lot of meetings, but um, that won't be part of this initial motion. This initial motion is just to make sure that we do create school zones for the middle school and the high school. Okay. So Chris, um, are you here? Yeah. Great. <laughs> so could you just give us, to the extent that you have one, like an update about um, the IWAC plans for next week? And um, I think all the elementary schools, I saw that they're all like listed as participating on the official website and... Yeah, I mean, um, it has definitely been, um, harder this year because we don't have the constant weekly promotion from the superintendent's office um, like we did last year for both events mm -hmm. um you know for a month previous in the weekly deb westmoreland email there would be um the sign up sheet and the kind of quick narrative about what the um the walk consists of Sure. So uh, we don't have that this year. I did make the request. You know, I just, Dr. She is not going to be dealing with this for the whole year. It it just, I don't think, you know, between the budget crunch and oh, yeah. ACCs, um, you know, there's just, um, I've also requested a meeting and haven't gotten it. So, you know, I'm just going to do what I can with the Family Resource Center, and I think that's going to have to be it for the year. And so recruitment, right now we're at about um, 50 families. Last year at this time, we probably had 75. We need the principals to do their robocalls. Um, this year we do have the gym teachers at the elementary schools also pushing out the sign up. So I think it's going to be fine. I don't think it's going to be a banner year. Um, we are going to have even more police escorts this year um, from the, the Echo Hill crew. We'll have a police escort, too. Um, and there's one new rally point at Crocker. And then we have one new school, which is Pelham, um, participating. So they're going to have a little meetup on Harkness Road and then walk and ride their bikes down to Pelham. Okay. So, um, you know, it's fine. 
it's totally fine. Um, and certainly compared to, yeah, we're, we're doing it and not a lot of places are. I mean, yeah, I was on the map just the other day. Like I was looking at the official safe routes to school map on the state yeah. website and like, we're one of the only towns in, in Hampshire County. Yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. I mean, you see like a whole bunch of clusters around Springfield, Though, of course, there's in Springfield, there are a lot of students who are walking or biking already, right, that they don't aren't getting buses because of their proximity to their schools. But I did not see like hardly any in all of Hampshire County. So kudos yeah. to us for continuing to do it. The other cool thing this fall is that Tori is going to be going to Crocker and Wildwood. Oh, great. And, and um, cycling safety. And then the... Um, Fort River gym teacher did not want to have Tori come in, but she's kind of doing it on her own and she's pretty into it um, and in touch with Tori. So, okay. so, um, so I so. think that's a good kind of newer development. Um, and then I think out of this, I'm going to have to pull together the first um, bike rodeo committee. Um, right. But then I'm not here. <laughs> I actually leave on vacation um, next Wednesday, which is what uh, is happening. The day, yeah, yeah. I either need to elevate elevate you, Tracy, or Jeremy to be appointed. Well, that's what I wanted to. That's why I like had messaged you about just like connecting. I didn't know if you were leaving this weekend or something. Um, so I'm sorry. Could you just repeat for me um, which schools are going to be doing the curriculum this year with Tori? It was like Fort River. Or is it um it's no not Fort River. Not Fort River, okay. Fort, Fort River is supportive, but not right, right. um so it's Wildwood and Crocker. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, if you know when those are, I mean I might be interested in like even like sitting in and just seeing what it is and if okay. if, we're, if um, that's an option for us. <laughs> yeah, I don't I just want to kind of see it in action, you know. Maybe I'll just reach out to Tori about it. But And do we have any, you know, I just was asking before you got on, I asked Guilford if he's going to be there. Do we have any, you know, VIPs or anything? Definitely not a VIP, so I definitely wouldn't be there. <laughs> what? People, I don't, um, I, again, I, so, I didn't prioritize it. And no, no, not at all. But maybe we could, um, here to, um, if you have the list of the different, like locations and stuff like you know paul bachelman or lynn griesmer they'd both you know volunteered to be part of it or um or mindy dom right well, when she stopped by our table at the block party she was super supportive just, just the reality is i am not willing or capable to add it into my schedule no i i get it i get it and you're not here either so um i'm happy to reach out to them well i don't want to put it on a rally point leader Oh, no, not, a, yeah, I understand. So, like, okay. you know, I'm, and not that Lynn Greisenberg needs hand-holding, but no. if, if we have a VIP show up, we need a plan for that person to uh, mm -hmm. plug in and do the thing. And it's, yeah, I don't um, okay. feel comfortable doing it it's just because there's not a lot of backup for the Rally Point leader. Got it. Or maybe at the schools, they could show up at one of the schools. No? Yes? Um. Again, the production of okay. what would be happening at each of the schools is uh, um, not a guarantee. I mean, is like, for example, Crocker doing something? Do we know what they're doing? Or just I welcoming the students? Ever. Um, the okay. best place that does a good, uh, that does a reception is Fort River. Okay. Um, and uh, Wildwood, the administration doesn't participate in the reception. It's the PGO. Got it. Okay. The PGO can be, it can just be a little bit spotty depending on what they can pull together. No, I understand. Okay. And which was really cute. But, um, so yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, you know, it's happening. It'll happen again in the spring. I think people want a bike rodeo. Um, but we do need to figure out a better promotional outlet. We were way too reliant on Debbie. Yes. 
And do you have a do you have an estimated date of when you'll be doing the bike rodeo in the spring? No. Ish. No. Okay. Kim. Um, as far as the um, you know, I appreciate that we used to get the whole like lots of information from the superintendent. I'm kind of annoyed actually that the superintendent sent out their letter as a video chat because like I wasn't gonna click on that link and I feel like I haven't heard from our superintendent and that is something that I will follow up with rather than just complain about. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm trying to think about the other ways that I get a lot, you know, information about community things that interest school age children from the schools. And I guess it's from the PGO, like the maybe I'm trying to think P about PGOs aren't sending that stuff out as much anymore. So I remember checking in with a bunch of the PGOs last year, the elementary school ones, they all used to have blogs. Like I know that yeah. Crocker, Crocker shut theirs down. Um, and I know the middle school doesn't have a blog anymore. Wildwood, you know, they had a defunct Facebook page that they didn't have access to. And I think they were hoping the superintendent would, but I mean, the principal would something. send some stuff out, but I get from the schools that and I the see. high school. So the high school PGO is the only one I think that consistently is like oh, maybe that's the blog. It. Yeah. And they okay. and even though the last year's PGO for the high school that most of those people had seniors, like they did find some people to continue to do news updates and they do them weekly. They send yeah, them out on funny. they send them out on Sunday and they used to send them out on Friday. But yeah, it's it's really too bad because there's a lot of community stuff that just I feel like is not getting to the right audience. But but I do think that some of it, like I mean, maybe Chris knows a little. I do think that some of the principals are sending out like the a Wildwood parent told me. I think it was like the Wildwood principal was sending out like a weekly update or something. Uh, we so. sent out. I mean, we asked I mean, the principals all the. It seems like the principals do regular updates, and so we asked them to. Obviously, they had to send out the link to so right. do the robocall this week because they need to refer folks to a specific link in their email in order sure. for, for the safe groups. So hmm. some principals sent, have been sending it out every week since they got it. And, you know, I don't actually know what Derek has been doing. or at, at So, so Chris, so the names that were collected, you know, when we tabled at the... Um, first day of school event and then at the block party those got you know entered into in like a google form or something is there have there been emails that have been going out to that list or has it just yeah, been segmented course. by no but i didn't know if it was just segmented by schools or something or if there's just like like general email like i think like lynn griesmer and like other people and even um like you know chief ting had signed up on those lists so I didn't know if they've gotten I mean, any you know, of the emails. I didn't enter those people. In. Okay. I supplied them to Heather Sheldon. Got who, it. Okay. And then okay. she has sent out to the, e she has emailed out to the whole list globally. Oh, sure. Okay, great. Times. Okay. So, um, it, again, it's just not the same as having the Debbie Westmoreland. No, yeah. absolutely. I, I agree with you there. And then I did ask, um, Seth is the, Seth was recruited away from public television or something. I don't know. Yeah. He works in um, Dr. She's office to help her maintain and, you know, a brand. So she's got some whole communication strategy that's like a newsletter every other week and a podcast every other week. And she's and been she, like naming people like, you know, heroes and all that stuff. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I made the request to him. I made the request to Marta to ask her and you know it, it didn't happen so um again i just don't see what we are doing as being a um no something that she can deal with which is unfortunate i mean i think from the superintendent's office this past year debbie's strategy was like throw it all in and just send it out and that you know that way we're just at least able to communicate to folks um right even if there was no other prioritization happening, I think Dr. She is way more in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Know. So. I get it. Well, and also, right, I mean, we heard last week, I mean, she's she's pretty new to the job. And 
what did she propose after the like all towns meeting or at the all towns meeting that the middle school and the high school merged to like save the budget so she i mean she's got a lot of big things on her plate yeah that's, you know and she's brand new to the system and well, like that's and that's pretty bold right so not that it's necessarily a bad idea but it's out there no so. but everyone else has been kicking the can down the road i mean she has to deal yeah. with this because she's in it for the long term i i I didn't want to. I didn't want to veer off into school politics. No, no, I don't want it. Yeah, I'm just trying to say. I'm. I'm just trying to be completely understanding about. Absolutely. I'm not going to get much from the superintendent's office, so I just. I am going to have to have a conversation with Marta about better communication, for the spring events and how to yeah. do it in a way that's not so reliant on the individual. And and if Dwayne like has that capacity as well. So 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 who is the superintendents like, like how 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 is that? Seth? There's a there is this person Seth. Seth oh, and, that's Seth. We probably have gotten Martha. like parent. Marta is the director of the family center. Oh, oh. And she had put herself out there. She's part of the district's leadership team and she had put herself out there and her office is like helping coordinate safe routes to school. Okay. And she had um somebody in her office, Dwayne Chamble, who works a lot like with the families who come to the family center and mm -hmm. he also does stuff to support middle school and high school students. Like he runs that before school mm -hmm. program and things. Um that he was kind of um tapped as a person who would be like their office's main coordinator. The family center doesn't have a big staff, but yeah. Okay. Anyway, but thank you, Chris. So can you just um before we move on, can you just tell me like how many um meetup points are there about between all the schools? I'm just curious. It'll take me a second. Like oh. it, or but... just an estimate or I was just, you know. Um yeah, I don't recall off the top okay. of I think that there's two for Wildwood. Okay. I just, you know. um, let's see. Yeah, um, it'll take me a second. I mean, we can. Don't worry. Yeah, let's let's, let's move on. So, um, Christine, could you send me the um, meetup points for Wildwood? Um, sure. Yeah, Thanks. I will. And Kim, do you think the high schoolers would be interested yes. at all? Awesome. Awesome. That'd be great. Um. Okay, so then the next item on the agenda was the TAC vacancies, membership, meeting ideas, and so on. Um, so one reason I put this on the agenda is just that, you know, we have had a vacancy for over a year. Um, and also just, and so I have talked to the town manager's office about filling that vacancy and then also that Joe... Federuso was also going to be stepping down once there is somebody appointed for him. He is mm -hmm. not going to, his appointment was up in the spring in June and he wasn't going to continue with the new appointment in part because his family is leaving the country soon. Um, and it just seems like sometimes, you know, I've been the chair for a while and, you know, Kim has been the assistant chair. I have another year left on the committee, assuming we're still here then. Um, Chris and Stefan have been appointed out to 2026. And, um, you know, if there are ways we can run the meetings that it's like more involved. And um, one idea the town manager's office had given me is he said that some committees do occasionally meet in person, like if we thought that that would be helpful. Like I did, I have liked it when we've done like site visits and things like that, but it's very convenient to hop on Zoom. And I know sometimes we have trouble getting quorum. So would we even have quorum if we met in person? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we want to talk about bigger changes. You know, once we bring in some new members, we should hopefully be in the next couple months. Um, but if people had ideas, so. At the DPW office. At what the do you DPW office? With Guilford. Well, is Guilford home now or is he still in the DPW office? No, I'm at my house. <laughs> I just yeah. have the I just have the DPW over my shoulder. Yeah, that's that little building over there on my. Oh, that's you have that's, 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 that's not from this year. That's that's a pretty nice uh, that's a screen, right? That's not from this year yet. That's a little like brighter then, but yeah. No, that's it's one of Larry Kelly's aerials he did. Nice, he had good aerials. You got, you know, Groff Park is behind it, and then the DPW. So, oh, cool. 
So I'm at the DPW, but not at the DPW. Exactly. Yeah. One day there'll be a different place for the DPW. Okay. No, there won't. Oh, I hope so. No, I there hope won't. So. Yeah. There um, <laughs> we're going to be right there. That's the that's our location. Oh, oh really? Summer is signed up. Sorry. What's that? What's that, Chris? I'm going back to Safe Roots. I apologize. Oh, what? So I'm sorry. What did you say about that? I'm sorry. It is signed up. Wait, I couldn't hear you. You were fading in and out. Who signed up? Lynn. Oh, Lynn signed up. Yeah, right. Nice. Good. Yay. Okay. Um. So, I mean, do people have other ideas about it? Or do you have people you want to recruit for the committee? Um, the town manager's office does have a list of people who have applied previously, um, including since the last time we filled vacancies. And um, Angela Mill showed me the list, and I think there are some really good people on there if they're still interested. So so why then, don't we recruit them? I, I would like to, yeah. She was going to follow up with everybody to see if they're still oh, interested. Oh, cool. Great. Um, and I mean, there is the idea of this transportation commission by listening to the TSO meetings. Um, I think, uh, they're going to, they're kind of going through it sort of slowly. They're looking for, yeah, but maybe with all of, maybe and, with all of the new work they need to do, they might transition. They might true. decide. I think what they were planning on though, is because they have so many other things on their plate that they would dedicate like a little bit of time, you know, every meeting or every other meeting, but then it would be like extended out like for a while. Hmm. So in an Amherst way, this could be a long process. So I do, I am looking forward to filling the vacancies. And, and they, um, they, they definitely have things they don't want to deal with and they want to move to uh, another way of dealing with it. So they, they, I imagine this committee may go faster than you think. Yeah, okay. I hope so, because otherwise we're just twiddling our thumbs. <clears throat> right. Although um, what they don't want to do with maybe not maybe not as much fun. Not what we want to do like parking. <laughs> may not be as fun. Oh, but we're having such a good time right now. <laughs> okay. Um, so are there any other thoughts? Uh Savannah emailed me and he had a few ideas, you know, for items so we could circle back to, like including uh Cushman and oh. also um, street lights, which I think mm. was def you know referred to at the DPW about a year ago. I do want to get back to the bike ped plan. I know Chris and I have talked about that offline a little bit. Um if we have other things. And I mean, at some point, you know, some of these other projects could also come to us, like the whole Southeast roundabout idea and things. Very exciting. Or the four roundabouts, apparently, that are planned. Well, the ones at Southeast, cool. the, the Southeast Street, yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> I love it, but so it might not be digestible by everyone at the moment until it was i mean so one thing about it is like i think it is really informative for people who are interested in it to have watched the meeting or you know read a synopsis of the meeting because the documents that were put forth and included in the packet including the memo it was like focused on you know speed like um and focus on making sure there's like not congestion and it didn't and it was really good to hear guilford that um that you were thinking about a lot of other things too like even though there's no language in there in the memo and in the CD M Smith report about safety or anything that those were also like part of the discussion. So it was good to see. Um, yeah. So somebody had actually sent me a transcript of that portion of the uh, council meeting. If anybody wants to see it. Oh yeah. I'd love to see it. Actually. So I can send that around to people. Um, and then, okay, so let's see other updates as available. So let's see. So the West Street redesign from Potwine to a Long Meadow Drive was approved by the council a few meetings ago. And Guilford, um, are you anticipating that that project is going to be done this fall, like in October sometime? I think they're getting ready to start. Okay. Um, cool. But wait, is it the same 
who's the contractor who's doing some of the other work like on North Pleasant Street and so on? It's Caracas. Caracas. And are they the ones doing this project too? They will be. So do they ever want to finish one project before they start new projects? <laughs> like on North been... Pleasant Street, it's been like, you know, it's been since the summer. <laughs> oh, North, North Pleasant Street's not theirs. Oh, okay. Who's doing North, North Pleasant Street? Uh, well, we figured we found out today why North Pleasant Street is going so slow, but it's actually Warner Brothers who's doing North Pleasant Street. Okay. This part of the paving project, not the sidewalk Im improvement uh, okay. project we have going on. Um, but whenever, whenever a certain institution of higher learning calls them, they go run over there because their prices are higher for that institution than we pay. I see. Uh, Okay. Um, all right. And um, so that's great. So it sounds like Caracas is going to be starting that Long Meadow project soon, but hopefully some of the other projects will wrap up by the, then. I mean, just, you know, so that there's not detours and are there going to be detours and things for that um, project? No, um, for that one, it's going to be more just moving moving traffic left and right and okay, good. waiting a little bit. And I mean, will the council, I mean, or will DPW look at changing some of the speed limits like once that's done or will you wait and have the, like do a speed study and then look at the. Um, uh, the only way to change the speeds is to, um yeah, do the speed study. So we, we would probably wait and see where we go. So a speed study doesn't necessarily have to be like a huge in-depth study like at Cushman. It could also, couldn't it just be like looking, like collecting the speed data and, um, saying, and like telling the state that like, hey, we've done traffic calming and speed management stuff in this area and that's, and the speeds are lower and now we want to change the speed limit. Is that right? Or um, I'm not stamping a speed study and Jason won't stamp a speed study. Um, we'll bring someone in and okay. they will do it because okay. there's too much pressure for us to do it like you just said and oh well, i was just asking like how the process goes but so know. we would bring we would bring in cdm or okay. well cdms who we use for those things okay. we would bring them in we have a, a new engineer that works for, for us there she's really nice um we've been telling her we can get her up here to go skiing so you mean that would in, be vermont? A... in vermont yeah. not in Amherst. <laughs> yeah in vermont <laughs> Guilford's always skiing. You're yes. always skiing? I instead, try to. Instead of doing the walk, bike, and rolls days, Guilford is skiing usually. Okay. Um. All right. So then also, so the ribbon cutting next on the agenda, the ribbon cutting, that's next uh, Friday? It is. For Bill And yeah. Cool. And so it sounds like um, you said somebody from the Department of like Housing will be there and. Yeah, Secretary. Oh, that's okay. Well, it's right here. Um, Stobel. Nice. Cool. And it is looking good. And as I said before we went live for the meeting, I do appreciate the, that there's the. um. You know, bikes can take the full lane signs there, which is awesome. And we finally got we finally got the electric meter, so the lights started working last week. Oh yeah, cool. Oh, they haven't been working. No, we didn't have a we didn't have a power meter. Yeah. Oh, but the but the sound was going like the RFB ones or like are there other lights? No, the the overhead RF lights. Oh, okay, working. the overhead lights. Oh, okay. Because I've been down there and I hear like all the. So, you know the messages about the RFB crossings. Yes, those do work. So, um, so next on the agenda, I had put um the chapter ninety, like section seventeen C, and um you had mentioned that you were gonna, so that's the one where the town had passed something, um that section of the MGL that says that you can lower the default like speed limit to twenty five miles per hour in thickly settled areas and other you know areas that meet the criteria 
And um, you had mentioned, Guilford, that you were starting to put up signs, right, at some of the yes. roads where that, <laughs> at the town limit signs, you know, on those roads. But then early in the summer, you had said something about how, um, you know, like, for example, like people asked about Heatherstone, for example, because some parts of Heatherstone actually have speed limit signs and some don't. And whether all the speed limit signs were actually what was Correct. done before they were put in or whatever. So is that like a, has, and you had mentioned how Jason was going through them and just sort of looking you know, at different roads about the history, about which ones could be changed to this 25 mile per hour speed limit where it would apply and which didn't and things. Yeah, there's still, there's still, I mean, people want to see a list of which ones are which. Yeah. And so we're cleaning up the, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're actually going to put a sign there that says 25 miles an hour if it doesn't have a speed limit. No, I understand that. But yeah, is, so. is that, I mean, do you anticipate that you would have a list at some point that you could share? There will be a list at some point, yes. Okay. Because um, that is really helpful for people, I think, too, because I even saw, for example, like Hadley, right? You live in Hadley, and they said, well, we're going to, they were looking at um, adopting it, too. Chapter 90, 17C, and they say, well, we're going to change all the speed limits in town to 25 miles per hour, or at least that's what the media says, and so... No, it is helpful to like know which <laughs> which roads are changing and which roads aren't. And yeah, the, the story yeah. said that they were going to change the roads that weren't posted. Oh, okay. The twenty five. But even so, so the, that's not all because not everywhere meets that like densely settled criteria, or does it in Hadley? Um, no, so. even in Amherst, it doesn't. I know that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. I mean, if if there's no speed limit on there's, I don't think there's a speed limit on um high uh flat hills i don't think there's a speed limit up there at all mm -hmm. so that'll be 25 it's right. not completely settled at all no of course yeah so okay yeah i mean i think you know if you when you have more information that would be great to um just find out a little more i mean one thing i was at some training that was held by the bay state roads program and um jim danilla who's like the state traffic engineer was there and he was talking about, uh, there were some questions about once you have the default speed limit, you know, is it 25 miles per hour under chapter 90, 17 C? Like if you can, because um, some neighborhoods were still saying that they still want to have like the signage that says 25 miles per hour. And he, and his opinion was that you shouldn't be doing that. Like once it's the default speed limit. Correct. Um. So and I guess that's probably the case in Amherst too, right? Where you would be removing like some of those or something. No, there's there. Well, if you if we remove a sign, it's because there isn't really a there wasn't an official speed limit uh, okay. that sign for that street. Got um, it. And because the way they voted it, they could have voted and listed. They could have said make a list of every street which doesn't have a speed limit on it. And then they could have said all these streets in this list are now 25. Right. Then we could have posted a speed limit sign on every street. Ah, okay. But they chose not to do that because Mass DOT doesn't recommend it. Although if you read the list of communities that have done it, uh, many of them have done, that's what they did. They took all the list of streets that didn't have a speed limit and they said uh -huh. these are now 25. Got it. So our council could always revisit that and go the route of like having a list. They, they could, could yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that does seem like that could be helpful, <laughs> but okay. Well, Gilbert, um, didn't you suggest that at one point? And they I were, did. And it didn't go very far. It was not very well received. It wasn't. But I think otherwise, right? Because if you're not posting which streets they are, then I, I mean, I'm not even sure. I mean, I'd like to hear more in the training, that training I went to, there were a lot of law enforcement people there. I would like to hear more about like how enforceable it is if there's nothing posted. I mean, it seems like it would be a pretty big challenge. It's not. That, oh, okay. The one, the one thing this rule does give you is that um, poli the police have now have the right to run radar on any road in town. So if it was unposted, you had to use your judgment and observe the car and say it was proceeding at a um, 
unsafe in an unsafe way. And that's how you gave them the ticket. So now they can actually just turn the radar on and clock you and then give you a ticket. That's pretty, that's cut and dry. So. But it's not, but they're not posted. Not posted, but that the rule is accepted. Oh, okay. And. Oh. But what about the, I mean, that wouldn't be true in the areas that aren't like densely settled or something then. Right. No, no, the, the, this new rule lets the police run radar oh, okay. pretty much everywhere and use radar as their basis for writing you a ticket. Okay. That's the that's the one really, really, what I see, that's the one really good thing out of it. Maybe we can invite Chief Ting to one of our meetings and he can explain this to us a little too, like how they would do it operationally or something. It seems, it seems... I mean, it's good. It just seems complicated too, like in that people would complain about the tickets and whatever. I don't know. You could, but if you're driving down a road at 45 no, miles I an hour, no, I understand that. Hour, yeah, yeah. You know, the, I mean, you'll have people. But it, but it would also be good to see, like, um, yeah, as you were saying, just the roads that are posted. I mean, there are a lot of places that have speed limits that are posted that are above 25 miles per hour and like, because you were saying that some of those might not have been like legitimately created or something. And so. It'd be good to know like which streets those are too and things. Most most of the ones that aren't created properly are the twenty the ones that are posted twenty five and thirty. Oh, okay. None of the high speed ones. All okay. the high speed ones were went through a study. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. And um so other road improvement projects I just had asked you about North Pleasant Street which you said is a Warner Brothers project and it's coming along and it will, and it's still, I saw that like there was some town like social media post and they're, um, you know, it's still supposed to have the back end parking and all the, it's um, and the bike lane, the counterflow bike lane and things like that. It's, it's supposedly they finished, they, they might be finished paving today. The paving looks pretty close. Yeah. And are they, they are, are they doing the lines too or? No, we'll do those. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks great. I know. It, lo it looks great to me. And are there raised crosswalks there too? Still? Or are they not going to be raised anymore? The raised crosswalk is at the intersection with McClellan. McClellan, McClellan there was one? McClellan, yeah. So that's on like crossing McClellan, right? But it's I thought there were... But we it had also talked about that there was going to be a raised crosswalk like north of McClellan. Is that not being included? And there are some yeah. curb cuts there still, I think. There's curb that. cuts. I don't I actually I have to go back and look really. Okay. I think that what, should be the, the what most. What the council important. approved was like including a, a crosswalk north of McClellan. There's a crosswalk, but I don't remember it's raised. Oh, okay. It should be. It should be raised. That would be a very good kind of deterrent. Because, you know, I've noticed recently, like people just going both ways on that street. So I have noticed that too, actually, a lot. Like, um, I've been, I, yeah, I mean, I've been I've... noticing people turning off of like you, you know, coming from UMass and turning, going south on it, and and all the people who live on that street just do it, go the wrong way, all the time. Maybe we need it's, to contact the police about it's, that. It's because it's a there's not any lines. It's a big. It's a. I mean, it looks like a runway right now. So yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. I'm. I am looking forward to like once the parking and the it's all striped again. Like I think that hopefully that will help. Do you think that there will be um signs on the? I mean, I think I think it would be very useful is to have signs that say one way on the other side on the Kendrick Park side of the road. Facing the students? Yes. There will be some, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. And the sidewalk is almost done, like all around the perimeter. Both of them are done. Of, I think of they, the, they of finished. Kendrick Park. Yeah. That looks really nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's only one more piece of sidewalk to do, and then that that part of the Kendrick Park plan will be done. That's nice. That's nice. Um, okay. And the bathroom. That's I'm not doing the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> Is that is just your, being, like, isn't your office involved in the bathroom? Like nope. DPW's involved? No. 
Oh. No, we we gave them connection points. They told us where they're going to put it, and they took it to all the people who had to approve it. But now they have to buy one. Oh, so, okay. So I thought I saw sewer lines going in. There are sewer water, sewer and water is in, um, electricity is in, fiber optic is in, supposedly. Um, cool. Yeah, it looks great. Really looks great. Yeah, it's awesome. And then, um, so tell us about Heatherstone. Are there any updates on Heatherstone? Yeah, it's going. Meaning what? I haven't been down there. <laughs> well, I heard that there were some issues with the mini roundabouts. Well, we were laying them out and adjusting them and doing some playing around with them. And we keep we keep kind of trying to adjust them. Jason's been adjusting them in and, in and out, in and out. Uh, what do you mean in and out? What do you mean? Well, we've been trying to make them fit in the area we're working in. Uh -huh. um, some people are concerned. A lot, oh, there's a lot of people who are have expressed uh, a lot of negativity about this whole project. Um, right. So on in Echo Hill. Yeah, they don't want the sidewalk. They don't want the road narrow. Um, they just want us to slap in speed humps and let it go. And hmm. you know. I wonder why that is. Well, it's I've, I've driven down it a couple times, and I thought that they were. You know, it's almost like I didn't notice them. <laughs> you know, and it like they are really small, but at the same time, they do do just enough. Um, I, I felt like, okay, this is just enough to slow me. I mean, not that I would speed down there anyway, but it did cue me that I needed to be a better, more cautious driver. So I thought that that was, I thought it was working on me, but again, I could, could be biased. And I mean, the one, the one drawback we have is we, when you like, when you look at these mini roundabouts, you look at communities where they do it, they just throw in. A circle in the middle of the road sometimes they put a signs in it sometimes they put a barrel in it and um the inter the intersection is much smaller than what we have um and they just tell people to live with it but they're not on bus routes mm. um right. so we, we're having to accommodate the bus and but then again so if you have a small car like a fit or maybe a a prism mm. Yeah, it's not, yeah. I mean, you might be able to zip through and still not have to slow down very much, but everybody else will unless you want to drive drive over. You know, so it's. Well, and I mean, I guess so. Longer term, like if it decides, if the town decides to keep them, like you, it could actually be like an installation, right? Like so, like this afternoon, I was driving on the one at University Drive South, right at that little. Yeah, and and I mean there. The roundabout is pretty big, but I mean, it's not flat with the ground. It's just like raised the littlest bit. And so it seems like any larger vehicles could still easily go on it, around it or whatever. And they can't like, actually, it, it does have like an impact. Do they not, actually, they can't go up there. I mean, it's not, very, it's not very high. No, they can drive over it too. Yeah, um, I figure. But uh, you'll, you'll see every once in a while, you'll see the, the PBTA bus that has to go down University Drive. They'll make the right on the University South, go through the roundabout, oh. line, and they actually don't track across the roundabout. Huh, they just go straight. Well, no, they just they go around this outside, but they don't have to drive over the middle. Right. Oh, so wow. you're saying it's wide enough? Yeah. It's more than wide enough. The, the people we have going across it, or if you have a a delivery truck that's going oh, sure. in there. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, not, I'm not. I mean, not not a semi truck goes in there. That's the ones who actually have to drive over and track over the island. Of course, they got to go under the bridge anyway. <laughs> well, they're usually they're either usually going into the new doctor's office now. They no, get I understand, yeah. So it's it's kind of interesting now. The dynamic there has changed a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so is the sidewalk on Heatherstone? Is that also going to be put in this fall, or is that going to be sidewalks in? Oh, it's in already. Oh, okay, interesting. I I have gone buy it or gone through it twice and i have seen people using the sidewalk times like one time it was like i don't know two o'clock in the afternoon you know some kind of randomish time so i don't know i was excited about that yeah that's great that's great 
And then, um, well, the other one I was thinking of too is Southeast Street. So um, Andy Steinberg just sent me an, an email today and it sounds like there's some timeline for the TSO to be talking about the Southeast Street really soon. Um, like by, they were looking for comments by like October 10th or something, but that seems like a pretty quick time frame, but considering that there's no funding for it and there probably wouldn't be funding for a few years. Do you have a sense of that, Guilford? Um, Southeast Street or? So the bids came, the bids came in like four or five million under estimate. Right, yeah, for the school itself. For the school itself. So right. there's a contingency built into the project, which is four or $5 million. Mm-hmm. Um, so tech, if you think about it, I mean, there's, there's four or $5 million that's available to, based on the appropriation from the town that you could use to help do this work or do something different. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, it sounds like there had been like some questions about that. So you think that it could move? I mean, my impression after watching the council meeting was that it didn't sound like much would be done until like after the project, the school project is pretty far along. Just in That's case what we're you, saying. In case you do need to use the money, right? Like if you use some of this extra contingency and then the project's over budget, then <laughs> what do you do? So they, it sounded like they wanted to wait. And the project, the school, right, is supposed to be open by the fall of 2026. Yes, but if they, if they do that, then what happens is the school opens you fund you fund the inter the changes there on Southeast Street, and then you end up going into construction for another year or two. Oh, so right. you just just have more construction. Right. So so some people want the some people want the some of the improvements whatever we need improvements that we truly need to do done before when the school opens. No, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It so, should but, be. It should well, be done. Because well, people... it's it's going to be a disaster for so many, I mean, for traffic in the morning, for kids trying, parents trying to get into school, buses trying to get into school, out of school, like it needs to get done. I mean, to me, I mean, parents like Fort River parents, including some of whom are transportation faculty at UMass have described to me like going in and out of Fort River with their kids. You know they have to pick up their kids for some reason and that it's been hard to like turn left out i mean i can see like having those roundabouts right near the driveways and that's the way that roundabouts are used a lot at schools right i do think it can be more complicated at some of the inter like the bigger intersections including at route nine but well, can you just um i'm having a hard time understanding what criteria would push the construction after the new school it has been built versus you know concurrent with like what what would why would one scenario occur versus the other there's no money for this work so it's mm -hmm. just, so it's waiting to make sure that we come in under budget for building the school in order to then somehow sh sloth the money off on the construction outside the school yeah so sort of like that i mean yeah someone has to say this money someone either said has to say here's here's this much money to keep going and build these things outside the school project or someone has to say well we think we have enough money left in the appropriation for the school that we can use this for the intersections right so practically speaking, there's no scenario right now that's viable where the work could be done concurrently. Because um, I'm not, not, um, not right. really at liberty to say. Okay. Okay. Is it is it possible to have like a partial project to prioritize which of those roundabouts are the most important? There is a uh, proposal the town manager has that he's discussing that can move something forward faster. Okay, that's good. But someone has to decide. You can use this five million extra from the bid budget from the bid under for some of this work. Got it. And you're saying you're not at liberty to say because that's also part of the discussion that 
that Paul is just having with what the council? Or mm -hmm. is there some other separate proposal for funding? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about it as well. Okay, that's fine. So with the new school, can you just remind us about once it's open, will families be going in and out of like both um, driveways or one? So the the when we were talking to the when we when this was being discussed during the design of the school, they said the money there's no money for anything but the school, right? And we can't do anything but we can't do anything else. So what we what we kind of said, well, if you want different, if you want to have different circulation patterns for buses and and then parents, mm, right? Split make the north driveway the parents and teacher driveway and make the south driveway the buses dr bus driveway okay and that's how they set it up yeah. is that okay. right so the uh, south driveway is the bus driveway is that what you're saying mm -hmm. okay yeah but then and then we were told we were kind of said but you can't go into the common either so that that was another that was well, another and one idea you talked about at the meeting, um, at the council meeting, is the idea of like making a wider sidewalk on the on the school side, right? Like um, more of like a multi-use path potentially, like where kids who are biking or whatever would also be able to be on right. the sidewalk. And that sidewalk's not well. I don't know exactly how near wide or narrow it is right now, but it also is overgrown a lot, so it seems narrower like from Beltrotown Road to the school driveway. Yeah. That's a segment that you're talking about, right? Yes. And that, and do you see that if there was such a multi-use path type installed there, do you see that it could also extend like down Route 9, like going out towards where there's new housing or anything like that? No. No. Well, I mean, already as it is, there, it's very near, the street is very narrow. So if you extended the sidewalk, I mean, the street, there, there's no berm, essentially, there. Well, on, our, on Route 9? No. You're talking about Southeast Street. On Southeast Street, if we extended that sidewalk. I thought that's what you were talking about. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was uh, what we were saying. Because there's hardly, I mean, the sidewalk is like, you know, whatever, five or whatever, five foot wide sidewalk. And... If we were to actually put them and, and the berm there is, I mean, it's a, it's a proper curb and then there's hardly any room between the lot, the white line and the, I hear what you're saying yeah. on both sides. So, so northbound and southbound on Southeast yeah. street there. And if you can't go into the common, I mean, right. that's very, I guess it's still to be decided. I mean, so the council is like looking at it more and thing okay and then tr truly you got to decide where the cars are going first and how the car is going to be accommodated before yeah. you can do pedestrians and cyclists sure. yeah, yeah yeah although everyone wants us to do it backwards it doesn't no that does not make sense work. Dave, no no but i was curious though like for example like uh cdm's analysis of the you know when they were rating in terms of traffic flow and looking at the four roundabouts, like they were doing it, like not looking at if you had crosswalks at the roundabouts as well. Right? At the one? And the ones that, no, like for example, they were doing like part of the analysis was to improve traffic flow and the recommendations for the roundabouts was about focus on improving traffic flow, like according to the report. Right. right. But so one of the ways that they were looking at is right with the roundabouts, you have constant flow like it can be slower. I mean, it does calm the traffic and mm -hmm. you, cause you can't speed through all those roundabouts, but right. it's like constantly moving. So you have like good flow, but then my comment was just about like, for example, if at like the main street, you know, Southeast street intersection, if, if you all this, if you had crosswalks there with the roundabout, you know, for example, at like the beginning of school and the end of school, like that could impact the traffic flow. So the, their analysis really didn't look at that, but most of the analysis of roundabouts don't look at that because they assume that oh, yeah. the, the the model assumes that if a pedestrian shows up, they have the right of way most of the time, and okay. then they just they, everybody has to yield because 
the people in the circle are, I mean, people coming into the circle have to yield. And that's where most right. of them, so they just assume that's how it, it'll function. Um, it's kind of weird, but. It, I, I do think, though, I mean, this is just, you know, it's not on the agenda per se, but I do think maybe we could do some education about that, too. Like, I've noticed that some of the roundabouts around town, like when I'm trying to enter the roundabout, that the other vehicles, like to the left of me, aren't, nobody's yielding at all. Like some people, they, no, I mean, they just assume like they have the right to go right through. And just like when, you know, when you have a four-way stop, like a four-way intersection and, you know, you have like who has a right of way. I mean, you still have the same thing at a roundabout. And, and so I feel like there might need to be like some education about it. Um, and then there was a letter in the paper the other day about like how this person was saying how they put their life in their hands, like every time they go in a roundabout or a rotary and a lot of people use them interchangeably and they're totally not the same, but I feel like, you know, there could be some outreach. Yeah. Based on the on things people, are, based on the things people are seeing throughout the country about drivers and how they're driving and the different things, it might be wise to make us all to get our driver's license again. <laughs> it's true, actually. <laughs> well, some States like recertify people, but um, nobody, there's no states that make people take a road test again, but some people I, could definitely use that. <laughs> I did have a question if, if I mean, to me, if you have four roundabouts, right, because that was what I read in the paper anyway, right on that street, which are, I assume they're both at the main intersections on either mm -hmm. side of the school and then the two um, yeah. entrances and exits, correct? Um, yeah, like what would happen <laughs> during um, school in, I mean, mostly it's the morning, right? Because that's when people are trying to get to UMass and using, you know, the, um, Route 9 becomes pretty busy at that point, as does, I guess, Pelham Road. Um, and people, so if you have four right in a row for like um, roundabouts, like I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, there's a potential for there to be this massive like backup, which I've never seen at a roundabout, but I've never also been at a roundabout with four closely spaced and like lots of traffic and potentially a lot of pedestrians and whatever, like a massive kind of change in use of the road for, you know, 30 minutes every day, maybe you know, so go, 18, go, 30. Yeah. Go, go to the Triangle Street roundabout next Friday, about three or four o'clock. Yeah. And you get a backup. Room. No, and it, there's a backup yeah. in the morning, too. Yeah. I mean, there's a backup. But, in the morning. but, 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 but my, point, my point is, you all, is it's not just at the one, but now there are four. Like what happens when there's just a long line of traffic? Like I don't, does that? I don't, I can't, my brain can't understand how that actually would work. It goes like, slower. It goes much slower. Well, it has to go a lot slower, but I'm just thinking like, could there be impossible movement at some point? Like, <laughs> there, well, I, you know, uh, I, I, well, I, and I, I have to say, I mean, that. in that point, I hadn't really thought about it, but like, I have thought about this sometimes, like with some of like the like the really large speed bumps at UMass or things like that. Like if, if people feel, and like one, people don't always feel comfortable with roundabouts, like that letter in the paper. Um, and I've heard many complaints about roundabouts. Um, but then also if people feel like, I mean, does like putting this in, will that encourage some people to like take a different route? You know, like what could be the consequences on other roads nearby? Yeah. I mean, right. if, and if you're saying like, if you're, you're saying Kim, like, wow, this is really super slow through here. I think I'll cut over on another street or, or I mean, make some of the, I have to say make like one empathy. Fort River parent I know. And then they said, well, I've been trying to, you know, the route nine construction, I've been trying to cut over on Heatherstone, but then Heatherstone is like backed up and closed there. Yeah. And, you know, when there's been all these road projects all at the same time, people are like, where can I go? And, but I am curious about. Yeah. Yeah. No other. Anyway. I mean, well, uh, and really, in the end, it's about the safety of the and, kids. And the roundabout will. I mean, it's safer, and it does allow for the flow. Right. But I think there will be points, as you're saying, Kim. You know, when it's going to be 
slow <laughs> going through there. Yeah. Which is fine. It's I mean, everyone has now. to slow down and there are kids going to school and that's okay. You know, like that's kind of the entire point. Yeah. 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 I, agree. I do worry about like if have you have, you if you slow everything down. Oh, I can't hear you. Nope. Whoa. I didn't do it. <laughs> we can't hear you, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy, maybe you should, should we? All right, are you gonna come back in? Okay, we'll, we'll wait or are you, yeah, okay. Um, what has feedback from the council been on the um, roundabout plans, Guilford? I'm just they uh, referred it to the they 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 wanted uh, they wanted us to talk more about pedestrians in the plan, and then they wanted uh, they referred it to TSO. All right, thank you. You can hear me now, right? Yeah. yeah. This happened in a work meeting this morning too. I don't know what happened. All right. Okay. So let's move on <laughs> because um, we're already at 635. So I did talk to Amber, you know, the last minutes that we had reviewed were back in for November and we're already in October. So we do have some minutes to catch up on. Um, so if we have, if we can go through the minutes, uh, the two minutes she gave us, that would be great. Yeah. And uh, Stefan, if you're here too, you can like weigh in on the minutes and then we can get through them. So um, I did take a look at them both. I mean, there were a few things. It's a little, unfortunately, right when we get so far behind on the minutes, it's hard to remember exactly what was said, but there were a few places. Um, I thought we could maybe do some clarifications, but overall, I thought the minutes were fine. Did anybody have any other comments on the minutes? I'll, I'll just pull them up. Okay, this is... Uh... Okay. So you can see my minutes. So this was when we talked about um, the traffic calming at Cushman. Right. I think this may have been a meeting, one of the, maybe the meeting where we had so much public comment. Um, and then uh, in North Pleasant Street, Pine to Eastman and um, the streetlight policy that now went to DPW. Um, and so, yeah, Guilford, it would be great if at a future meeting we could talk about that. And then, so I highlighted this thing here just about mass general law about speed control within municipalities because, uh, and I would just send Amber a note about just clarifying it. So, right, there's a couple different things that were happening. Like one is in regards to Cushman, that there's the speed zones or the safety zone, sorry. And that's actually defined in mass general law as opposed to like school zones and also the 25 mile per hour. So the, um, right, so mass general law, you can set up safety zones, which then they have speed limits of 20 miles an hour. And that was the thing that the council agreed to create a, a safety zone near Cushman, like subject to the study. So I didn't remember, Guilford, did they actually create the safety zone before the study or did they create the safety zone after the study? After the study. Okay. Ah, but what they did, right, is that they didn't, what they did is they, the council approved the section of the MGL that says like in 18B or something, in chapter 90, 18B, I think perhaps that it says that you can, that once you adopt it, just like with 17C, then with 18B, yes. it allows you to create safety zones in the future. Yes, that's so what I think. Did. I think that's what Amber was trying to get at, but I would just like clarify that, um, you know, just because it's a record. And, uh, and then just the road projects. And we talked about the Transportation Commission, which we're still talking about and, and so on. And I didn't really know, oh, this was a topic I think that you had brought up, Kim, about the new crosswalk sidewalks that were in um on mm -hmm. the south end of kendrick park yep about the placement yep and, that is um, I, yep and then um you know we also just talked about the stone ice bylaw 
which again here, um, the online form is the form. And maybe I would just ask Amber to clarify that too, that the online form is the one that's like done through the inspection department, not other online forms. Like it's not done through like C-Click Fix or anything like that. So um, does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. But I thought the minutes were fine. So do we want to go ahead? Do we want to just look through the second set of minutes and then adopt them both? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop sharing this one. And then I'm going to share the other one. So let's see, actually. So just going back to the last, so the meeting on the January 7th, I mean, 11th, one, we were all here. We were all at the meeting, all six of us, the members. And then the meeting on the, in March, we didn't have a meeting in February. It was a short month. And then, yeah. Um, so let me share that one too. So this was about um, a TSO uh, North Pleasant Street to Pine and from Pine to Eastman. So that was one of those things. Remember, we had done those site visits and then I never submitted the memo because it got dropped, but then it kept coming up at TSO. So I finally submitted something to them. And that there had been community development block grant funding to uh, to do some of the work on the north end of that on the near Pine Street. Um, and I'm assuming here this review of the TSO memo, I'm assuming this is the memo from TAC to TSO, just sort of summarizing our feedback from earlier. And then also just, you know, safe routes to school and the citizens for a Palmer rail stop, mm -hmm. um, which we didn't meet with them at that time, but they had reached out to me and then they came to a future meeting and um, the JCPC. And I think that was it, right? Pretty much. Does that all look good? Yeah. Yes, looks good. Okay. All right. So I, what's the word? So you say uh, we I, if we approve the minute, like TAC approves, has reviewed and approves the minutes, right? Yes. Like with the change. I motion. Right? Yeah, I you make, make a motion. motion. <laughs> That's what I want. That we approve the uh, minutes from March and January of 2024. I yeah, and I would just say, as I said, I'll just like make a couple of tweaks and send them to Amber. So we were, as, we, as we, yeah, as amended, yeah. right? Okay. So everyone um, can say aye. So I'll just do a roll call. So Chris, aye, and Kim, aye, Stefan, hopefully, aye. Okay, and me, aye. So that we we approve them four to zero. Excellent. Moving Thanks, along. Amber. Thanks, Amber. And then, okay. And uh, for our next meeting, I had, um, I'm going to stop sharing. So I I do have things next week. Well, any of the high school parents, Kim, Chris, and the, the high school open house is next week. Yeah. Right. And then I have an obligation on the 17th. Um, we could plan to meet on the 24th. Sure. If we have updates. Okay. I think also, I do believe probably the TSO may refer some stuff to us. I know, does that sound right to you, Guilford? There were some things. Yes. They wanted feedback on. And um, okay. So I will send that out to the members. I mean, Marcus had said he was having trouble coming to some of the meetings. I don't know if changing the time helps at all or. Maybe we could reach out to him about that. Yeah. I mean, and then also just, I, I mean, I would be interested maybe in like trying a, um in-person meeting again sometime or something. Um, Yeah. Kim, what else? There was something, but I, I totally forgot. I just had something too. Okay. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you, Guilford. Thank you, Thanks Amber. Lot, Guilford. Thanks. Thank you, Stefan. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Stefan.